why should you take action now? Once loan function is lost, you can't get it back. So progression is unpredictable and can occur at any point. You see the guy up on the top of the, we'll say cliff here, and you can see that with IPF, if you think about maybe three people in your neighborhood that had IPF, um, everybody's course of the disease would be different. You may have someone with a slow progression. You may have someone that may have periods of, appear to be stable and then they may end up in the hospital. And then you have people that have rapid progression. So again, I go to different support groups and I, I met a patient that had, was diagnosed with IPF and in one year she was on oxygen and she was in the wheelchair and she had just been diagnosed one year ago. And then I meet patients that have had IPF for maybe three years and they, they feel like they don't really have any symptoms except a little shortness of breath. So again, everybody, course of the disease is different, okay? All right, now how will your doctor measure your disease? IPF overview here. Force vital capacity. Now, how many of you all have been to the doctor and your doctor has shared with you or the respiratory therapist for you to take a deep breath and then blow, 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 blow? Have you experienced that? Yes, okay. So, that force vital capacity, it measures the amount of air you can exhale with force after you inhale as deep, deeply as possible. So again, when I go into the offices, I hear the respiratory therapist all the time tell the patients, to take a deep breath and blow, 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 blow. I hear that all the time. So um, the doctors, they can measure how well your lungs are doing. That's why they're doing that test. And then um, your doctor may do other tests as well. But a meaningful decline is defined as 10% or greater decline in FBC, and that's your force vital capacity. Now, how can you partner with your health team? Again, it's very important that you have your questions prepared because we all know when we go to the doctor sometimes, we only get, what, maybe 15 minutes and then the next patient is coming in. So you want to make your appointments as, as, as um, effective as you can. So, you, again, you want to bring your family members. You want to jot down any health changes if you feel like um, your symptoms are worse. You feel like maybe you know you're taking different precautions, maybe taking those rest periods throughout the day and you feel better. Um, now tell your doctor why you're fighting for IPF. I say here, I'm an IPF warrior, and when I go to Norfolk, I, I see that they have these t-shirts on that they wear um, on their bucket list is to keep breathing. And I thought that was so nice and creative. They were blue because when we think about pulmonary fibrosis, September is pulmonary fibrosis month. So they have these blue shirts that says, um, yes, on their business is to keep breathing. Um, so I'm definitely an uh, IPF warrior for my patients. Um, and again, I always say bring your family, bring your friends, and ask questions. If there's something that you don't understand, ask your doctor to just put it in simple, plain English or layman terms, okay? Any questions, stop me. So again, we're going to talk about a treatment that I feel like we're making history because again, before 2014 when I worked at the Veterans Hospital in St. Mary's and I saw patients come in when I worked in the emergency room, I felt so helpless because, you know, the doctors I would see just give them oxygen, they maybe gave them some steroids or something, but now we have a treatment option for patients with IPF and there are some important things for you to remember. Yes, sir. Good question. Oh. Well, um, the doctors, what they do is they, um, I have a little lung model here. I always go in the offices and I have the nurses listen to the rails and things and I always say, show me your stethoscope because then they have that conversation with their doctors. But they do a high resolution um, CAT scan and they listen, you know, they look at your lungs. But the doctors, it may take a whole team of doctors you know, to work together like the radiologist, the doctor, um, to see what's going on. And they do a past medical history because they want to know what's been going on in your history. So when I talk to the doctors in the field, you know, that's some doctors, they have to do a lung biopsy. So, yes, Peter. IPF has a very distinctive cracking sound. 
Yes, and I have the long model. I can't leave it, but I brought my little long model with me that makes those little sounds. I don't know if you've seen something like this, but I showed Mary. You want me to take it around for you, Mary? Yeah, and I'll turn it on. And you'll just have to keep pressing that little button. And you can tell them about the difference. Yes. There's one lawn that looks healthy, and then there's another lawn that has fibrosis. And like you said, Peter, it makes that little, those little crackles. So I always take that in, and I always tell the nurses to show me their stethoscope and let them listen and say, if you have a patient and their lungs sound like this, I want you to have a conversation with the doctor. And especially if they have those symptoms that you described, they feel shortness of breath and they're working in the garden and things like that. Oops. Oh, press the little button at the top. Sorry. You're fine. And you said it sounds like bubbles, right, Mary? It sounds like bubbles. It sounds like bubbles. Yeah. What, do you, what yeah. would you say, Peter? It, it, every doctor tells me that it sounds like Velcro. Mm -hmm. that's part. Yeah. Well, that's what they said. That's what they said. Some people say it sounds what like little hair. I, I never listen Whoops. to it because really I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to know what it sounds like. But my, I was diagnosed by my uh, family physician, and he heard it, and he's like, oh, let's... Uh, Let's do a x-ray, CT scan, and then in the end, the pulmonologist sent me to Dr. Nathan and Inova, and I had a pass. Video system for us, too. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. Keep talking. We learn. We learn. We all learn from each other. But they say that it sounds like, if you, if you listen through a stethoscope, it sounds like a Or if you put your, your, your hair on your ear and go back and forth, sounds like that as well. We'll read. Which one? Here, I'll mind your song, Mom. I don't read. I love you. Well, that's Ozzy Osbourne, right? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia said it sounds like her snoring. <laughs> no, my husband's snoring, not me snoring. <laughs> as many patients as I can. 